invite our panelists to take uh, a seat here in these uh, very nice seats. Can you introduce? Uh, I can. I can do the introduction. Yeah. And uh, you ju just did a brief introduction, but a few more words. We have uh, Mark Bouchier. He's an uh, assistant professor in clinical teaching faculty at the Medicine of Sherbrooke University in Canada. And he's an IPC counselor. We have, sitting next to him, we have André Vincente Esteves de Cavallo. And he's responsible for the psoriasis uh, ambulatory and is a researcher at the hospital in uh, Brazil. And he's also an IPC counselor. And we have uh, Xu Chun. She's a senior consultant dermatologist at, uh, in Malaysia. And uh, Dr. Chun is uh, uh, an, uh, a board member of the IPC. And at the end, we have George uh, Tiplica. He's head of the second department of dermatology uh, uh, in uh, Bucharest, uh, Romania. And he's also IPC counselor. So welcome to all of you. And maybe I could just ask you the very first uh, question. So and that's, that's actually a, a short answer, a short question, a short answer from all of you. Uh, what are the most important reasons that you would switch a patient from a topical uh, to a systemic treatment? It's not an easy one, I know, but just a quick Should try to make it order? a quick answer. You want a very short answer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's a pleasure to be here. First of all, Canada is a very large country, so uh, we have different opinions. But what I can tell you is that it, we have no Canadian consensus or guidelines of, on how and when to switch a patient. But what is sure is that it's not based on score. That means that we don't look at a certain PASI score, certain DLQI or BSA. It is done by collaboration between the physician and the patient. And I, I'll make it short, okay? So if the patient is satisfied, well, I am satisfied. On the other hand, if there's still a four or 5% of body surface area involved, I will tell the patient that maybe there's other options that we can do to improve this. But if you're happy with this, we can keep it this way. But there was, I will always open the door for potential improvement, even if the patient is satisfied. So that's what it is, in my opinion. Uh, well, Brazil is also huge, and it's also yeah. different in, in its... Uh, uh, <laughs> in its opinions from, from place to place. But we, we, we have our guidelines and consensus that has been published in 2000, 2020. And uh, lots of authors are here in, on the audience. And we follow the, uh, the IPC uh, um, uh, severity classification. So this, is, this helps us to, to get from topic to systemic therapy. But I, I completely agree with Mark. I think the LQI and what the patient tells you is uh, the most important uh, for, for that decision. Hi, everyone. I'm from Malaysia. And uh, we also have a psoriasis management guideline in our country. Uh, but if we are being asked uh, when we will switch our patient from topical to systemic therapy, obviously it will depend on whether the patient is happy with the topical uh, treatment. So I'm uh, uh, very ready to uh, switch them if they are uh, not happy. And uh, I tend to uh, uh, switch a bit more to, uh, faster if my patient is young, as we have heard um, several times that it is important to hit hard and hit early, particularly for young patients because it will impact uh, on, on their life, a huge uh, cumulative uh, life uh, uh, impairment for children and a teenager. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry, I'm from Romania, so Europe. Um, what I can tell you is that we don't have uh, guidelines, national one, but we are following ADV, EDF guideline. And um, relating to the question, I think that, um, of course, we will uh, switch when the patient is uh, not happy and when we are not happy. But I don't think that we are, or at least I'm not doing a switch, I'm adding something else. So uh, I keep uh, tropical treatment, uh, not uh, removing it for, 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 for always, because uh, it can be of beneficial use for the patient, even if he's not uh, so happy alone with the topicals. But I think that adding some uh, uh, low um, 
class uh, dermatocorticosteroids or uh, keeping some emollients, it's very beneficial for them. Thank you. Let me see whether, yeah, it works. Um, f from my side, I also have a question to you. Um, and yeah, this question actually um, is, is actually focused on the availability of biologics and biosimilars. And in brief, the question is, can you tell us a little bit whether you have the feeling that the availability of biologics and biosimilars is sufficient in your country to provide optimal care to the patients? Mark, can you start again? I will be ha very happy to start. Uh, Professor Iverson showed that there was 12 biological agents that are presently approved by the Food and Drug. And we're very, very lucky in Canada. Our patients are very lucky that 12 drugs are approved in Canada. And these actually will be covered either by private insurance or public insurance. So we're very, very lucky. I'm not saying that it's always easy because sometimes we have to struggle a little bit to get the patient on drug, but there's presently no Canadian patients uh, that will not be treated with a specific biological agent if we feel that it is not indicated. Yes, we have to deal with biosimilars for sure if we're using adalimumab, for example, but if we are using rizakizumab or some other drugs, we can go actually with the actual medication because there's no yet uh, biological agents for these agents. So I must say also that uh, ustekinumab, which I, I guess is a very popular drug, uh, we were the first country to uh, approve uh, ustekinumab in December 2008. So uh, before US, and sorry for my US uh, colleagues, uh, but uh, <laughs> we were very proud of this. So we're, we're pretty lucky so far in Canada. Our uh, patients uh, are very lucky. Mark, is there, can there be a situation that you would have in mind, for example, to prescribe a, an individual patient, for example, an anti-IL-17 or an anti-IL-23, and that there is an incentive to prescribe relatively more anti-TNFs. I'm just challenging a little bit. Presently, there is no such thing happening in Canada. I know that it is happening in some other countries, but it's certainly at this stage not happening. Uh, we have some private insurers that sometimes will say, well, you should offer this one first, but we are not obliged. Canada so, is like a dream for me. It was for a lot of Dutch yeah, yeah. people. They, but, but they Peter, immigrated. Peter, Peter, it's minus 30 in winter months. I, Don't I'm, forget I'm that. I'm happy, but when I can get... The, the, this is great. We have Putin. Andre, can you give this perspective? Yeah. Yeah. From, uh, from your point? In Brazil, from the 12 uh, biologics, we have nine. But until 2018, we had none to to prescribe for our patients. They were there, but we could not prescribe, n not even in the private sector. Um, now, uh, nowadays, we have to choose a anti-TNF first in the public sector. And um, we have some uh, criteria to jump over the, the, the anti-TNF, but uh, we have to use it if they're not met. Um, and regarding biosimilars, we have biosimilars. Uh, rheumatology uses the way more biosimilars than us. And uh, the problem is that biosimilars should be 30% cheaper than, uh, at least 30% cheaper than originator drugs, and they are not in Brazil. So this is a problem. The other thing that happened is when biosimilars got there and started dropping the price, the originator pharmas started dropping the price. So it was something that is that was beneficial for our patients, and now we are paying less for biologics, uh, thankfully. Not less enough, but less. To give the international perspective maybe a little bit about this, Arnon, Arnon, I know you have done a lot of work. There is an extreme variability in the price reduction for biosimilars. Huh? Lars and myself, we are living in countries where there is 90% reduction also in the originator prices. And maybe Italy also, Paolo? Yeah. yeah? Uh, yeah, and and you have a reduction of yeah we had we had some reduction. reduction but but no no we have a, a consistent reduction a very important reduction mainly in anti TNFs mainly and but how it, much how much how much percent is the reduction I, I, I could not say now but uh, it is uh, maybe two hundred dollars a a injection of adalimumab 
okay. uh, which was uh, for us way, yeah. way, way ex more expensive. Yeah. yeah. For I know from Egypt, for example, that there is the price reduction is just marginally for, for biosimilars. Ainan, you. So the, the IPC had published a few papers about the use of biosimilars uh, throughout the world, and uh, definitely we've seen the uh, uh, price of biosimilars uh, go down. However, this is very variable. In some countries, it's a 10% decrease. In some countries, it's a 90% decrease. So what I'm about to say uh, may cause that I will not be invited to speak uh, in conferences, <laughs> but uh, I'll have to say it anyway. Um, I think uh, this variation, this world variation, should be shown. And I, I'm, I'm quite sure that if uh, healthcare uh, managers or decision makers saw that there is high variability, and I'm, I'm quite sure that if the uh, president of uh, uh, Brazil saw that there is 90% price reduction in some European countries, he says, we can do it in Brazil as well. So I think it's IPC role to, so, to show this variation, and this will cause eventually the decrease in a biosimilar price. That's Thank my you. belief. Thank you very much, Alan. Therefore, I asked also this question. June, what's your perspective with respect to biologics, biosimilars, and the availability in uh, your in, region? In Malaysia, we have all the biologics available except for bimikizumet. And uh, we don't have to go through uh, the step. We don't have to use uh, NTTNF first because in Malaysia, uh, TB is a problem. So it makes sense to, sk uh, to skip NTTNF if we can. And uh, we have two biosimilar in the Malaysia, one for Infliximet and the other for Adalimumet, but they haven't set the price yet. So we haven't started using. And in Malaysia, uh, we have very limited uh, budget for biologics, uh, but uh, to, to apply for government funding, you have to fail all the conventional systemic agent first. But the choice of the biology is uh, dependent on uh, what the practicing dermatologist has asked for. Yeah. yeah. Mark, would you like to make a comment? After, yeah, okay. George, please, your so, perspective. Romania, uh, it's a European country, but nobody uh, is uh, making any um, problem because we are um, one of the poorer country. But we are f full of surprises. For instance, uh, we are having all uh, or almost all the biologicals uh, available, including biosimilars. So this is one of the first surprises. Um, if you are uh, asking about how do we use them and you are looking in the statistics, you'll find out that um, only 10% of the market is occupied by biosimilars and uh, the other 90% is uh, with uh, bio-originals. Uh, this is something surprising that uh, probably we don't know the answer yet. But of course, uh, you, can, uh, you can think of uh, an intervention. And maybe, as Arnold was saying, uh, if uh, somebody in um, uh, the position to take some decision will look over the, the figures, uh, maybe he will uh, have a second thought. Uh, because we can use this, uh, these drugs and reduce the costs. Is there a lot of okay, price difference between uh, Well, it's not such a big difference, but uh, it is a difference. It is a difference. Mark, yeah. sure. If I can just add very quickly, all our patients in Canada that were on either on etanercept or adalimumab had to be switched to the biosimilar. We were, that was a mandatory switch. So we have uh, presently basically no more patients on Umira or Enbrel. So they have all been switched to the biosimilar. And uh, do you think about biosimilar will be uh, uh, available very soon? So there should be also a lot of switches from the, from Stellara to the biosimilar. So we'll see. Very good. Paolo? Yes, very shortly. Can you imagine how much does it cost a Dalim of a biosimilar in Italy? One box? Two vials, 47 euros. The same price that Madurex ate. So Fantastic Paolo. country, also Italy. <laughs> <laughs> that is really great. 
Thank you. Well, Lars, yeah, maybe so you ask the following I, question. I think in the one final question, I know we are running short in time, but one, one final question to, to all four of you, because this is, we should try to look at the, the global perspectives of psoriasis and we have a global representation on the, on the panel here. So if you look at your own practice or your own region, maybe what are the, 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 the biggest challenges when treating psoriasis patients in your country, in your practice, but also in your region? And we can start with you again, uh, Mark. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, there's always some uh, challenges, but uh, one of the, actually, we're asking if there was some uh, special situation where maybe are more challenging. So one is particularly challenging uh, for me anyway, is that the patient that I treat with psoriasis that suddenly start to develop like eczematoid reaction, or if a patient that I treat for a systemic for eczema and start to develop psoriatic lesions, then this become a, a problem. And I had some patient actually who had psoriasis who cleared, start to develop eczema, and they wanted to get their psoriasis back because it was they were more symptomatic with the eczematous lesion. I'm sure you've seen this in your practice. So the challenge for me is to get the combination treatment for these patients, because then the, the the price comes very very high. So in in my view, the best would be probably to have these patients on a biological agents for their psoriasis and probably a jack inhibitor for the eczema. I think this will be a perfect combination. If the price can be great, can be good, this will be absolutely fantastic. So, so we have to work on the cost of these uh, potential combinations. So what about Brazil and, and uh, South America? Uh, I'll, I'll talk about Brazil. I have no oh, no, okay. no way no yeah, way yeah. to say that the rest of South America does, does the same thing or the challenges are the, are the same. Uh, the first challenge is, I believe, is to train, uh, uh, try to change our direct uh, directives in public health care system. So we should not use an anti-TNF anymore, and we can choose whatever we want because we have uh, tuberculosis as an endemic disease as also as in Malaysia. Uh, the second thing is... Uh, Poly failures, patients with multiple failures. This is uh, uh, something that we are starting to get now. We still have a huge reservoir of naive patients, um, and I believe that is that is the, the, the great. Uh, and another thing, and I think is uh, the, the the mild patient is 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 a challenge now, because we do not have that many uh, topical therapy that are excellent for the mild patient. To me, is the cost. In uh, Asia, I think in general, our patients have uh, very minimal access to the newer targeted therapy. So cost is very, very important. And uh, if a TNF becomes 45 euro, I will use TNF, okay? <laughs> because we do know how to take care of our patients. It's just that if we have um, a biology that we don't have to worry about TB, we will go for that. But if the cost is so low, uh, it will mean that uh, more patients will have, set, have access to uh, a targeted uh, treatment. Thank you. So uh, the question was honest, and I will give an honest answer. Uh, a part of what were our colleagues telling about costs, and um, I have some problems uh, with the middle, uh, uh, let's say so, um, uh, drugs. Um, we have problems because we are not finding any more acetratine. We have problems because we are not finding um, uh, any more psoralin. So you want to uh, start a patient uh, with uh, systemic therapy. You know that you have good drugs, but they are not available. And also, for instance, methotrexate now, you can uh, still have syringes, but you don't have tablets. I don't know what is happening. Maybe it's a general conspiracy on the world, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you see that you, you have uh, to start uh, topical therapy. You have to end with uh, biologicals, very advanced one, but the middle treatment starts missing. What is happening? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Paolo, Paolo yeah. how much is a pizza in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much. And before Peter may have some final remarks, I think we should give a hand to the, the panelists here. Thank, thank you very much for your contribution. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you for your input. And uh, have a great conference here. Thank you. <laughs>